You know, during my first elections in 2011, you, as a candidate, you make promises and you have to deliver those promises. And one of my platforms were building market grants because I'm from the rural area of Maserato County, Todi all the way to Louisiana. So most of the women, majority, 95% of the women are marketeers. So what would you do for them? Create a good environment, let like building proper market for the women. So we're able to build two markets with storage, daycare for the babies, good office, good sanitation area, big market grounds. And in the future, when I re-elected, re I will extend it because we have about 10 acres of land. So we did that in Crossville because in the, in, in the different parts of Liberia now, they have market day. So that market alone, people from all over the district come to Crystalville. Here, Harrisburg own will be dedicating it when the president is on her national tour in the next couple of weeks. So that, that, that was very important to make sure that people are sustainable. Then you go to education, which we promised. So we're able to, between government and donors, we're able, and social development fund, we're able to build over 10 schools in our district. And most of those schools were in Tordy because Tordy never already had schools except elementary schools. So we're able to do junior high school and high school. Very beautiful schools. Now we have carried education to another level. So we don't need just seat certificate teachers. So you, we got um, teachers with BFC, teachers with master degrees, but it's from different parts. And most of them from Morovia. So we had to talk to donors to build housing for teachers, so it's, it's going well, very well. And with the Ebola crisis, it slowed us down, but Ebola had carried our clinics to another level. That's what I want to talk about. Quality education is very important. Getting your, your goods to and from the marketplaces are also important. But healthcare is another crucial part of the people living within your district, number one, are very concerned about. What effort are you making to provide quality health care as well for the people of uh, district number one? You know, since the Ebola in 2014, government increased. We have increased the Ministry of Health budget. They carry the last, largest budget in our national budget and a lot of donors to help us. So coming back to Todi, which is very rural, we renovated the clinics, we have running water, good sanitation, we have good qualified nurses. We don't have a, uh, a, a doctor station there, but we have died. We had a referral hospital in Bensonville, and that referral hospital have doctor quarters, nurses quarter, and we have ambulances now. We got three ambulances, and then we also built maternal home, so the women that live three hours, four hours away in the villages can come two weeks prior to their due date to stay in the maternal home to have the baby. A lot of things are happening that have government have done in the last 12 years. And with me being there the last six years, we have done so much. There are a lot more to be done, a lot more. So my campaign says we cannot stop now. We have to continue. So I'm going for re-elections and I pray and hope that with the work that we have done together to continue the good work for the people of district number one. So six years, seem to me like it's a lot of time to make things happen for people and from what I'm hearing, what I'm saying, you have done so much for your people and you're still willing to do more for them. How often do you visit your township or your district? One, two, where do you conduct your meeting? Do you have like a facility or a town hall or something like that for our, your meeting or meeting your people? We build town halls too. For the first time, Louisiana never had town hall. We just built a beautiful town hall that holds about 500 person. The township of Kingsville never had a town hall. We just built one that holds about 350 persons. And we do like Palava huts. And a matter of fact, I live in my own district. I live right in the middle of the village. So that's where I live. I live in a township of Kingsville township, and that's where I was born. And before I became representative, I was commissioner. When I left this country, I was commissioner of the township of Kingsville. Then I went to being the superintendent of Mozarado County 
now I'm representative. So I started from the bottom up. So I know how to communicate with my people, understand their needs, and we all at family because agriculture is very high on my agenda. So we make sure that we help them build a farm because I'm a farmer. If you ask me who you are, I tell you I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer, I grow a lot of rice for seeds and those seeds, I'm one of the first Liberian farmers who distribute clean seeds to the smallholder farmers. So today Liberia don't have to input seeds. But we're working very hard how to not input that 200 plus million dollar in rice every month. We're working very hard because I don't eat imported rice. I eat local rice that I grow and encouraging my constituent to grow the rice, eat some, sell some, save some of the seeds for the nice blend. So that's what we're doing. Agriculture is the way to go in Liberia right now. Quality education is high on the agenda. There are very few universities within Liberia, specifically. Let's talk about decentralizing the university um, situation in Liberia. University of Liberia, the LU, the Methodist University, uh, Cottonwood University, those are not few of the, the good uh, universities around there. Tell me about your interest in, in developing education with respect to um, colleges or universities within your district. One thing government have done, the 15 counties have technical, you know, technical colleges, 15. So the kids in Bonn County don't have to come to Morovia for school. The kids in Lofa County don't have to come to Morovia for school. And those colleges are supported through our national budget. And those colleges have, I think, presidents of those different colleges. In Morovia itself today, Moserato carry the most. They have a lot of EME, they have EME University, UMU University, so many different universities. I think just in Morovia alone, they got about seven or eight universities. Then uh, the 15 counties have technical universities. So government really have been trying the last 12 years of President Ellen Johnson's leadership as president of the country. But you know how it is. The level of corruption to really slow down some of the, the major impact that Liberia, the government wanted to make because of corruption. But for the first time, you can now go to any part of the counties, live there, and you send your children at least to first or second year college, technical college. It never happened before. You, 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 are, you are a businesswoman and a politician at the same time. Let's talk about your interest in creating jobs for people, specifically within your district. What are you doing about that? I have a water manufacturing plant. And, um, you know, we thought we couldn't do it. And that's now I'm telling our partners, the donors, we don't want aid, we want trade because my water should be good enough to be served anywhere in the world. So if you help us with the ISO to give us the certification of our water, we can serve it on all the major planes and hotels. So don't give us aid, give us trade. And it's very important. And I'm only one person. So the company I have, we hire a lot of young people, young men and women working for my company. And to see those Liberian men, young men and women, working on those huge machines that have to process from the, from blowing the pet forms all the way to finishing and packaging the water. Uh, it's well, amazing. You talk about hiring people, young people working for your company. Are those foreigners or are those Liberians? They're all young Liberians that live in my district. They, the only group of people that don't live in my district that's, is the hard tech, like engineers that have to work on the machine they live in Mozarado County, Morovia, and they come every morning from Pinsville. Finally, before we let you go, let, let's talk a little bit about agriculture, since you are into more of farming and, and business specifically. Tell us a little bit more about your agricultural work that you're doing in Liberia and your district. Specifically. Yeah, I'm doing um, agriculture. One part of my agriculture is palm. Um, growing a lot of palm for oil and we're processing the oil right on the farm. And women come and purchase the oil. And the machines are produced by a local um, uh, tech, uh, technical young man from Bone County. 
he he has um, he he was given some money to the USAID and he fabricated all these palm machine that you know our old people used to take maybe ten days to do one gallon of oil. It's just twenty four hours from boarding to processing, and and that is going on. A lot of Liberians investing into palm now. A lot of Liberians, and then I also grow rice and I raise cattle. So we do pigs. We have, and also for fun time, I have horses, and then we breed donkeys to carry stuff around the farm. And also sometimes the rural people use it to carry the stuff to market. So a lot of things happening in the agriculture sector, but we still have not reached there yet, and we need to reach there because a country who does not feed herself. It's not secure because food security is very important for every country's security. So that's what we're working on to make sure that in the next five years, the rest import will reduce because that money can stay in our revenue, in our country to do a lot of things, building roads and other stuff. So that's what we need to focus on. And now with the world market in the iron ore and rubber went down, it really hurt our economy plus the border. So we, now we have to start again trying to pick up. I think just a couple of weeks they said we have we were almost to three percent and and before the border we were to ten percent GDP. Can you imagine? So the government realized now that we have to diversify and in doing this it's focus on agriculture and that's what like we were trying to do. Interesting. So campaign is is uh, a month or two away, that's in July, officially campaign will start. What message do you have for people within your district, people who want to see you representing their district for the second term? I want to say to my constituents that first thank, thank them for allowing me to stay on the shoulders in the last six years. Because all of these good things would have never been done without them. They ready to work with me, we, we hung in together. We, I was always there to the weddings, the funerals, the graduation, the emergency room, everywhere we were there together. I never left them. And I just want to tell them thank you and ask them to please allow me to be reelected in my 2017 elections. And let us continue the good work because a lot more need to be done. And changing your representative now it will be a major setback for our district. Thank you for joining us so much. Thank we you. appreciate your time. Thank Honorable you. Joseph and Francis, Monsalvado County, District Number One. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank you. It.